When Audi adds the letters RS to one of its models, you can be sure they've transformed it into an uncompromising sports car. Now Audi has unleashed an RS version of its famous TT. This driving machine for Purus was designed by the carmaker's own subsidiary, Quattro. Its 340 horsepower engine and sports chassis make the compact all-wheel drive vehicle powerful and efficient. Optically, the TTRS's large stationary rear spoilers really make it stand out from its tamer brothers. From the front, you can recognize the RS version from its altered front skirting with strongly contoured air intakes. The sports chassis also lowers the car body by 10 millimeters, but the most important detail is to be found under the hood, as Josef Schlossmacher explains. Here the five-cylinder engine, which was present in the original Quattro, in the Sport Quattro, and of course in our rally cars, is making a comeback, he says. The new Audis can travel 100 kilometers on 9.2 liters of fuel. But drivers who constantly take advantage of the vehicle's enormous thrust and are late in shifting gears are likely to guzzle more gas. In the TTRS, a maximum torque of 450 newton meters is available to the Quattro all-wheel drive system. Given such power, Audi has been careful to make sure that safety and roadworthiness aren't compromised. Schlossmacher says that with the TTRS, they've made special allowance for the vehicle's capacities. They've adjusted the chassis to accommodate this greater power, more so than with the TTS. He says that overall the vehicle is 10 millimeters lower than the standard TT, and that the car has its own characteristics where cushioning and shock absorption are concerned. Like the coupe, the Cabrio weighs one and a half tons. As with all of its open top models, Audi doesn't give the TTRS a folding steel roof, but uses classic soft tops. This helps reduce the Audi's weight and means that there's more room for cargo as the electronically operated foldable soft top takes up less trunk space. Whether in the Cabrio or Coupe versions, the Audi TTRS also fascinated our test driver. He cited its razor sharp handling, the sports chassis and precision steering. The car hugged the street and he loved the Audi's wonderful sound. Driving it was an experience which touched his emotions and he calls it a full-blooded sports car. He says sitting down in the bucket seats is like slipping into a tailor-made suit. In spite of having all the attributes of a high-performance sports car, the Audi TTRS doesn't give drivers performance anxiety. They can generally travel for long stretches on the Autobahn in sixth gear. And maximum torque is almost always available to them, from the lowest RPM to the highest. With this impressive pulling power, the Audi TTRS makes life in the fast lane fun. Hot on the heels of the Golf GTI, Volkswagen has unveiled the new edition of its diesel equivalent, GTD. It's meant to combine sportiness with fuel efficiency. The GTD version has gray stripes instead of red. The roof edge spoiler is the same. Where it differs from the normal Golf is the 15 millimeter lower chassis. Prices in Germany start at 27,475 euros. Renault presents the station wagon version of its current McGain lineup. Despite being fully featured, the car's base price in Germany is only 18,950 euros, 600 lower than that of its predecessor. The developers have again paid special attention to safety. Six airbags are standard. In the McGain Grand Tour, Renault offers five petrol and four diesel engines, and for the first time, a continuously variable automatic transmission. That enables the motor to run at maximum efficiency at all times and to use less fuel.
They're fuel efficient, maneuverable, and inexpensive to buy and maintain. That's why compact cars are especially popular with beginner drivers. But vehicles have to be more than small and cheap to satisfy today's young drivers. They want their cars to be safe and well equipped too. Anne Christine Vendla has chosen an Opel Corsa. The fourth generation Corsa went on the market in 2006. It comes with appealing standard equipment, many optional extras, and more than adequate safety features, making it an attractive choice in its segment. But the competition in the compact car market is fierce, and at the beginning of 2009, Ford came out with the sixth generation of its best-selling Fiesta model. Even though they have the same target group, the Corsa and the Fiesta have very different designs. Take the Corsa, Anne Christine says, she likes the Corsa's rounded front, especially the chrome crossbar, which she finds very classy. With the Fiesta, there's no chrome in sight. Aunt Christine finds the front of the Fiesta quite angular, which gives it a cheeky, sporty look. Ford calls these sharp edges and corners kinetic design and Anne Christine views the car just the way its designers intended. The Fiesta's rear end is just like the front, quite angular, making the Fiesta seem dynamic. So much for the little car from Cologne. Just how does the Corsa compare? Aunt Christine especially likes the big tail lights at the back of the Corsa. She says they look friendly. Presumably, she likes her sticker too. Under the hood, the Corsa boasts a 1.3 liter 75 horsepower diesel engine. It's not exactly a racing car, but it will certainly please many parents to know that their children can't pick up too much speed. Opel reports that its Corsa can travel 100 kilometers on a four and a half liters of diesel. The car's interior is tidy and well constructed. Anne Christine Wendler says, she thinks the Corsa's interior is very nice and that the instruments are well arranged and easy to use. She especially likes the round ventilation outlets. She says she's altered the center console a bit to suit her tastes. What she doesn't like about the Corsa is that it lacks storage space. Its competitor, the Fiesta, also offers comfortable seats and quality workmanship. Anne Christine says the Fiesta's interior is very futuristic. She personally finds it a bit too fancy and therefore not quite so clearly laid out. What she likes best is that there's lots of storage space. With its 1.6 liter diesel engine, the Fiesta is also not the fastest of compact cars, but its top speed of 167 kilometers per hour more than meets the needs of beginner drivers. When it comes to cargo space, there's little difference between the two models, but the Corsa has the advantage of having a lower trunk sill. Both cars offer buyers a lot of comfort and modern safety features. So did Anne Christine fall in love with the Fiesta? Or will she remain true to her Corsa? She says, the new Fiesta is a very nice car which offers lots of room and a sporty look, but the color doesn't do too much for her. 
Da gefällt mir mein Corsa doch besser. She says she likes her Corsa better, partly because it's her very first car. After all, it's hard to beat your first love.